Welcome back to Healthcare Matters, where we discuss topics related to the future trends of healthcare. Today, we are diving into the exciting world of digitizing healthcare and transformation. We are thrilled to have an exciting guest on board, Mira Ganova, the CEO of the Digital Health and Innovation Cluster Bulgaria, a driving force behind digitalizing the healthcare system in Bulgaria and beyond. Mira's passion is contagious, and I'm so excited to have her with us today. Welcome, Mira. It's great to have you. We know each other for quite a long time. It has been maybe more than three years now. We talk a lot, we partner, we collaborate. But maybe before we deep dive into the topic, let me challenge you a bit with my first question and ask you, who is Mira and what does she dream about? Hello, Hisham. Thank you very much for the invitation. It's a pleasure to be here with you. Very challenging question indeed and uh, difficult question, I think, because uh, we have a lot of dreams, personal, professional uh, dreams, and uh, it's, uh, it's uh, very difficult to focus only in one dream. Uh, but uh, let me think a little bit uh, and tell you that uh, I'm a um, community-driven person, you know. So my dream is not so much personal, but uh, a little bit more a collective dream. So I believe uh, that the collective efforts uh, could shape the reality. So uh, I dream to be part of a movement that uh, could leave uh, a legacy with a positive impact and positive change uh, in, in our environment, in the world. And I think that I found my place uh, and I'm in the right place with such uh, innovators, dreamers like you and like our community that you are part uh, uh, of. I dream of innovation. I dream of innovation, but not uh, only in technological aspect. I dream of uh, innovation in terms of thinking, in terms of how we communicate, how we embrace uh, challenges, how we solve problems, how we uh, orient our mindset. And I dream of advanced uh, society which uh, can, uh, could and should make uh, changes uh, and uh, leave impact. Uh, within the environment. This is my dream. It's, I know, I know it's big, I know it's not so focused, but I really want to help industries, people achieve their own goals. So, yeah, this is me. <laughs> Indeed, inspiring. Thanks for sharing, Mira. And really, you are this community-driven leader who would like to work with other leaders to drive, you know, innovation and creativity and leave a legacy. But let's move now from dreams and get back to reality. Uh, recently, Bulgaria has adopted the National Digital Health Strategy. Please tell us more about it and what does it mean for our healthcare system and our patients in Bulgaria? Yes, Hisham, finally. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we, have, we have this uh, digital health uh, strategy or strategy for e-health transformation as its position uh, in the papers uh, in Bulgaria. So first I want to thank uh, Roche about uh, the support that provides us in terms of uh, developing uh, this strategy together with the authorities because we were very active part of this strategy. First you know that as an organization we develop uh, our own uh, frame of digital health uh, transformation strategy in Bulgaria with a colleague of us, uh, Rodoi Pavlov, of, uh, it's an uh, enterprise uh, architecture in University Hospital Zurich, so very advanced level in terms of, of digital transformation process. So uh, we are striving for this strategy for a very long time because this strategy could show us the path how we could move forward with all the advanced technologies that, that are already here. So this strategy uh, in Bulgaria arose in alignment with the National Health Information System in Bulgaria. Here is the place to uh, tell you, and you know it, of course, that we have a very, very uh, big and important technological product in Bulgaria. I uh, call it, call it uh, product. It's a national health information system, but it's a national product. It's a national big service and a project of our country. So we are uh, one of the few countries that has uh, such uh, a great uh, technological product for centralized the health data. So when we have this place 
that we can centralize all the health data so our doors are open to make a lot, a lot of things, a lot of changes, a lot of analysis, a lot of populations, um, uh, uh, predictive uh, uh, approaches and everything. So the digital health strategy was developed in alignment with uh, this national health information system in Bulgaria. But we must say that uh, a paper is not enough to achieve our goals. So we have a lot, a lot of work to be done. Of course, within this strategy, we can see several very, very good uh, point, uh, points and wishes, uh, but we need execution to make it a, a reality. So, but the strategy refers to centralize all the health data, to make uh, possible the real, uh, the real world information that we could could achieve, to analyze the health data and to uh, to extract the insights from from this health data in terms of. Uh, improve patient outcomes, improve of patient experience, efficient treatment, uh, efficient diagnostic, and of course co cost efficiency. Because when you have these buses and you can monitor all the processes that are are happening within the healthcare sector, of course you can direct uh, your resources better. So yeah, the cost uh, efficiency is very important part because you know that uh, the healthcare needs uh, are raising every every day, and for all the world, for all the countries, it's impossible to overcome all these challenges uh, related with these uh, with the diseases and the increased healthcare needs. So cost efficiency, equitable access to healthcare is other pillar of the strategy. Centralized data for better analysis. Of course, population health management is very important part when you have centralized data, uh, health data. You can see all, all the diseases, you can see all the people, you can make uh, very efficient screening programs on this basis. And uh, I must say that within this strategy, we have a very um, wishful approach and think to consolidate all the stakeholders uh, that could support this digital transformation process. So it's a very nice wish, but how we are going to do it? Because we are, um, we are striving for this uh, uh, for almost uh, six years uh, since our organization is founded uh, in uh, 2018. And I must say that the approach is not so um, well developed uh, till now to consolidate all the stakeholders and to use their domain expertise in terms to support the state to make effective and informed decision making in terms of better health treatment. Uh, so I support and our organization, as you know, we are supporting uh, this strategy, but we are waiting to see the execution plan and how this execution, execution plan is going to involve indeed all the stakeholders, the key stakeholders that could contribute to uh, the digital transformation process. Big congratulations, Mira. It's really a proud moment and very important milestone. And definitely, as you said, all of us are looking forward to the execution. But in, in when you mentioned your reflection, you mentioned also the word challenges. And talking about positive and proud moment, we would like to reflect also on some of the challenges that we are facing during the journey towards digitizing our healthcare system. What would be those biggest challenges from your perspective? How much time we have? <laughs> <laughs> you know a lot of challenges, so I'm going. I'm just going to tell you um, a few okay. uh, to not losing so much time, uh, because Europe and uh, Bulgaria as well is facing a lot of challenges in, in terms of uh, better and efficient healthcare systems. Okay, let, uh, let me start with uh, the first challenge is the fragmented healthcare sector. Not only in Bulgaria, in all the Europe and the healthcare sector as a, fund a foundation is very fragmented, you know. A lot of stakeholders, a lot of systems, a lot of technologies, a lot of things are happening within uh, this uh, healthcare sector. So the fragmentation is the first challenge that I could uh, tell uh, we should overcome because Europe uh, put a priority in this consolidation of health data, consolidation of processes to have United Europe healthcare. Uh, and this is very challenging 
for all the countries, uh, in, including uh, Bulgaria, because to centralize the health data is not uh, a, a very easy process. It's related to it, uh, implementing standards, protocols of communication, interoperability approaches, merging systems, engaging people, educating, build capacities within patients, within uh, healthcare professionals, a lot, a lot of things to gather this data. Okay, so we are gathering this data, but what we are going to do with this data? So the second challenge is the secondary use of health data because it's very important to all the, the industries, all the stakeholders to have regular access to this secondary health data. Of course, anonymized health data, but we should could access the data and use it for the research and development project, for research and innovation project, discovering new therapies, discovering new treatment approaches, discovering and, uh, and finding, not just discovering, finding deep, deep in these data, finding the best solutions for our patients, you know, for the European patients, for the worldwide patients. So, of course, uh, this access should be very well prepared and uh, uh, in regulatory terms, how you access who can access the data, for how, uh, for what period uh, we should access the data. But I think that the topic with the privacy is, um, is a, little, a little bit overwhelming our societies, you know, because uh, this is, this is the, uh, the key to transform our future, the data. It's the basis, it's the foundation of everything. So we cannot lock this data and not use it or, or just use it the state because the domain expertise, it's not in the, in the, in the state authorities. It's uh, within the industry, it's within the business, it's within universities, researchers and everything. So uh, the second challenge is uh, how we are going to utilize these possibilities and these opportunities to analyze the secondary data and what we are going to do with it, how we are going to use it, how we are going to analyze it. Uh, and it's very important to develop a research capacity in every country. You know, we've talked a lot of times with you about the secondary usage of health data and I think it's a very important topic. Of course, third challenge that I could say, it's um, um, I may say the education, how we are going to educate the healthcare professionals, the, the society, stakeholders, patients, to embrace the new year, to, to, to be prepared and adaptive to the new technological era. It's very important because of the fragmentation of this healthcare sector. Uh, for example, the physicians, they are think, okay, we, are, we just need to be focused uh, on medicine and, and the, 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 the clinical approach, but not. Uh, we should develop new skills, new capacities, uh, and to be more adaptive and uh, uh, to be educated how to work with these new technologies, not just to work in terms of technological products, but how to work to gather all the uh, positive insights that could be inside of the system. How, for, for example, one physician should know what system to use to gather better information for this patient, summarized information, electronic health records, how to analyze these data, uh, to use uh, decision support tools, because the physician, they do not have time to spend in uh, educating, educating just technologies. They must uh, adapt how to use technologies in, 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 the, in their benefit. And education is the third part. A lot of a lot of challenges to consolidate all the stakeholders. Of course, I'm very passionate about the the research part. We should work with universities. We should work with research centers. We should we should work with people who are striving to achieve more in terms of, of research activities. It's, it's very interesting, it's very inspiring, and most of it is very needed because of the increased healthcare needs. We need to find new approaches and the researchers are there for us. We just need to uh, onboard them. Very insightful, uh, Mira, thanks for sharing. And that will take me to my next point, which might relate to the third part you mentioned about digital literacy, working on the mindset, educating, and beyond technology, I know that the Digital Health and the Innovation Cluster work hard to foster a culture of innovation across the healthcare sector, across the healthcare industry. 
Would you tell us more, how do you cultivate such a mindset? Well, some very interesting questions and challenging ones today. I could say about uh, my perspective uh, as a community manager uh, in, in our organization. It's very difficult. It's very difficult because um, uh, the, um, to, to collect these uh, people and to foster them to, to think forward uh, and innovative, uh, adaptive, a collective, it uh, takes a lot of resources, a lot of efforts. But uh, let me tell you that uh, my perspective is uh, that uh, every every person should have and should live for for some kind of cause. You know, I'm a cause-driven person, and uh, I always be, and I always going to be. I'm a cause-driven person, and this is a very, very strong driver for me. And I think that uh, it's contagious to all, all the other people. When we started the cluster, and I uh, met a few companies when we found it, they said, oh, how we are going to share information, somebody is going to steal my idea, how I'm, how I'm going to, to uh, share so much uh, uh, insight from my company. And now we are making events in this topic to share information, to uh, build new knowledge, to build new skills within this ecosystem. So it's a long-term process. Uh, it's a matter of uh, collective thinking. It's a matter uh, very important of engagement and how you engage people. And I think that behind the engagement is the cause. Uh, how you attract them to think forward, uh, how you uh, attract them to, to think uh, that they are working not in IT sector, they are working in the health sector. So when you engage them with the social, the social impact of this sector, it's very different than just working, um, you know, for IT, for example, I, I'm, I'm working with IT companies, but our companies, the, the, uh, the beneficiaries of their products are the patients, you know, and it's a very social, it's above the technology, it's above the personal benefit, and, and because of, the, of, the, of this social sector like healthcare, it's a little bit uh, a matter of cause how we are going to impact the sector, how we are going to be part of this change, how our decision today are going to reflect on the patient's health tomorrow. It's some kind of the Roche slogan, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah, I use it uh, some, somehow. So it's very interesting. And uh, when we are gathering people and uh, uh, cooperate with people and engage them uh, in, uh, in these conversations, in these uh, impactful approaches, you are important. You are important for the patient. You are important for the, for the healthcare system. And you are a change maker. Then the things are going a little bit forward, a little bit different uh, than the other sectors. This sector was my choice as well because of the social impact, okay. yeah, because of the social impact, because in the end of the day, you have the mindset that you're helping the real, real people in, in, this, in this value chain. So for me, it's a very big driver, the whole sector, and I think that uh, our community is engaged a lot with this cause. And of course, we uh, shouldn't underestimate the potential of this community, of this digital health community, because all the domain expertise is, is there, all the experts are there, all the knowledge are there. So they want to support, they want to, um, to position the potential of their expertise, and, and, and everything is, is just happening, of course, uh, in, in a long-term um, process, but it's happening. And I think that uh, in five years, for example, or something like this, it's going to be an, an explosion of these uh, kind of communities. I think that we should uh, organize more small communities, research communities, for example, Roche, with researchers from universities to make some small community for research projects, IT industry with physicians to organize small community and to overcome challenges together. So this is my dream as well, related with your first, first question. I love communities. I think that the, that the future is based uh, on a, a community approach, collective thinking, uh, making forward through common efforts. So Hisham, we spoke a lot about digital transformation, about the, the new approaches, how we could overcome challenges and achieve 
uh, goes uh, in this digital transformation pro process. But this uh, process often calls for uh, leadership uh, skills, for leadership approach. And uh, in your opinion, what uh, are the leadership skills that we uh, should develop uh, uh, within the healthcare system and how we are going to cultivate uh, them uh, in nowadays? Indeed, it's a very important point, uh, Mira, and we need to be very intentional and strategic about it. From my perspective, the first one is the leadership vision, really to have a clarity on the destination where we would like to take our healthcare system, how we would like to serve our patients better uh, in the near term, in the medium term, in the long term. And this leadership vision need to be inspiring, need really to get people the energy to really fight for it. And that will take me to the second point, which is cultivating adaptability. Adaptability is very important. We live in a world that is super VUCA. It changes day and night. And we need to be very adaptable. All the leaders in the healthcare sector need to be adaptable, need to be really resilient. So they need to fall maybe 100 times, but they can stand up and fight again for, for great cause. I believe also very important leadership quality is to foster teamwork and collaboration. For our healthcare sector, our challenges are super complex and no, no only partner or collaborator or entity or organization can do it alone. We need to foster a lot of collaboration between the governmental sector, the private sector, startups, big corporation, academia. A lot of partners need to work together to achieve this uh, you know, great vision. Finally, I, I believe that learning is important and building this learning curve, how we you know, encourage what you call it MVB or minimal viable product, that 3D really you can learn with it and build on it and accept mistakes and take them really as an opportunity to grow further. I think it's a great and noble cause, as you mentioned in your reflections, and I believe it only can be done with a great leadership and great leaders. Thank you, Hisham. But uh, let me uh, specify a little bit and go deeper in these leadership skills. How we develop them? Is it state of mind to be a leader or we could educate leaders? What is your opinion on this? Ah, this is the usual one million dollar <laughs> question, like are leaders, you know, born or, or, or made? The chicken or the egg? Uh, that chicken or the egg, yeah, it's always a challenging question. But my own position that it's pretty much made so we speak a lot about growth mindset. You know, again, we are speaking about healthcare. We have a severe and big challenges. If you reflect on the patient journey, the challenges we are having due to diagnosis or treatment or outcome tracking, the challenges that our healthcare system facing. So the growth mindset will see challenges as an opportunity. The growth mindset will really encourage working together and collaborating with others and working with other successful people sharing knowledge, sharing information. You know, the growth mindset will be not shy to speak about mistakes and failures. They will take it as an opportunity to grow further. But I think this is something we can really cultivate, the growth mindset. And definitely the opposite is fixed mindset, where partners or entity or organization or leader want to work alone. People are really shy from setting and really ambitious goals. They don't speak about their failures or mistakes or learnings. But your question, I believe growth mindset is pretty much something, you know, we can learn and definitely we need to cultivate and continue to cultivate more. Very interesting and I agree with you. You know that uh, we, uh, in our cluster, uh, we, are, um, we have it's not uh, in developing phase. We have uh, uh, a course in Medical University Sofia, and Roche is supporting us uh, from the beginning of, of this course. You were a lecturer, uh, a key speaker in, uh, in this uh, Medical University. And I want to ask you, what is your advice to the young people, young uh, students, young uh, physicians, what they can do to become uh, leaders? Young physicians and, you know, our uh, fresh talents are, are crucial to the success of our healthcare sector. They will bring fresh perspective, really uh, more creativity and innovation. Maybe my, my invitation to them would be to start from self-awareness, 
Start first by knowing yourself, understand yourself. Invest a lot in getting feedback. What other leaders appreciate about you, what they are inviting you to consider. Spend time in journaling, reflecting on recent successes or learnings or failures. And the other invitation, again, and maybe we had some chat about the concept of the emotional intelligence, how they can invest in understanding others and really having empathy. Empathy is very critical in the healthcare sector. Either the empathy that other leaders and the different collaborators are having for each other and the empathy we are having for our patients as well. So definitely empathy is very important. And finally, put all your energy and passion in execution. So uh, resilience is the name of the game. Be ready that you can fail, but stand up and continue again and uh, try to reiterate, adjust and go forward. For those would be my three invitations. Very interesting, Hisham. Thank you very much. In my opinion, I should say that you are a great leader and uh, you made a very interesting presentation uh, in front of the young students uh, for leadership. So my advice is uh, to record uh, this, uh, this lecture. It was very interesting and thank you very much uh, for your advices and your reflections. Thank you, Mira. Very kind of you. And I was lucky to work with great leaders and coaches and I try only to a little bit uh, give back to our fresh talents. And so the environment is important as well, where you're going to develop these skills. Uh, so the social environment, the professional environment, it's important to foster the, the development of these skills. Exactly. I think the environment uh, really appreciate learning, appreciate the people who demonstrate the right behavior, uh, people who have clear vision, people really who are receptive to feedback. This environment is very important. It shapes the culture, really reward the right action, uh, ask us to take attention and care for the wrong action. So definitely, environment is critical for creativity, for innovation. Indeed, this is a very interesting point. And as we are coming to the end of our conversation, I think uh, if we use your reflections and your experience and leadership to really have clear three next steps, what need to happen in Bulgaria to accelerate our digital health transformation journey, and how we can engage a lot of partners and collaborators to support for this great vision. Thank you very much for this uh, question. I could say that uh, the, the first thing is the collaboration and the partnership approach. We should learn how to collaborate between ourselves, how to add value to our and, uh, solutions and to the solution of others, how we could develop ideas together, together with uh, leaders together with experts, together with healthcare professionals. Not keep the information only for yourself, not keep you in this bubble. Just be open-minded with forward thinking approach. This is my first point of view. Of course, collaboration in terms of uh, state, for example, we must uh, point out the public-private partnership approach. Uh, it's a um, buzzy word in Bulgaria, but it's very well developed in other advanced countries. And it is supporting the state to be more advanced, to be more effective and more efficient in executing all this strategy within all the sectors uh, in, in, in one country. So the collaboration with the state, it's very important the clusters that should be founded, that should be organized uh, within different sectors, within uh, different industries, is another approach uh, within the collaboration, the, the collaboration part. The, the, other, the other thing uh, uh, is, uh, of course, to have very uh, well measurable goals and to, to, to see forward what we want to achieve to setting clear goals, to setting achievable and measurable goals, and to pursue them. It's very important to be motivated and actionable oriented, because we need motivation and people to work uh, to achieve better outcomes in terms of state outcomes, in, ter in terms of uh, clinical outcomes, in terms of research outcomes. We need a lot of work to be done to, uh, to achieve this innovative environment, this advanced environment, and everything that we want uh, to be done for uh, our patient and for our healthcare system. 
The third step that, uh, that is uh, need uh, to be done is to organize a very well prepared legislation foundation for the digital transformation process. Yeah, it's hard, it's difficult, it's not the easy part, uh, of course, but the good things are difficult in this world. So uh, we, need, we need to set up a very strong legislation for the foundation to open the door for these digital health technologies to be integrated and developed within our healthcare system. And I'm going to give an example right away. We accepted a telemedicine regulation in Bulgaria, but we do not have the reimbursement part. So we have this regulation on paper, but how we are going to encourage uh, the development of these solutions, how we are going to reimburse them, how we are going to make uh, them accessible for the patients. And a lot of questions uh, um, behind this uh, strategy, behind this legislation, apart behind this um, wish to organize the telemedicine in Bulgaria. So actionable uh, oriented, forward thinking, uh, uh, legislation, uh, leadership skills as you said, collaboration between the sectors and uh, uh, of course gathering the best, the, the best of, of all of it, uh, the, the, the domain expertise from the industry. The, uh, the, the, uh, passion about the, the, the legislation part. We need to gather and to capture the best of all the stakeholders and to use the expertise to achieve our common big objective goals. Thank you so much, uh, Mira, for the insightful discussion, for your valuable reflections. Please keep on your passion and your leadership. I think we really need them. Uh, we feel very grateful to your efforts and uh, contribution. Thank you very much, Hisham. It was a pleasure to speak with you. Adoption of the National Digital Health Strategy in Bulgaria has been a great milestone. The key word now is execution. It needs a lot of teamwork and the collaboration and leadership. It needs big clarity on the deliverables, what we need to do in the short, medium and long term with clear key performance indicators and finally, we need to build the right capacity and governance. It has the potential to bring a great patient experience and to add a lot of value to their journeys, including improvement to diagnosis, treatment and outcome tracking. And finally, for our healthcare system to be more resilient and efficient because healthcare matters.